Hi there, welcome to the North Devon coastline just overlooking the town of Woolacombe. It's a, it's a beautiful evening, a lot of surfers out today and I've just gone for a little quick ride out this afternoon uh, just uh, to do a 5,000 mile uh, feedback on the Motor Marini Xscape. I, I bought this bike mainly because it was something different. I'd, I'd been running the, the Motor Guzzi V85 TT for a few years. I bought that bike to do the um, America trip. Got a van coming past to see what the sound works like. But I bought that bike to do the America trip of 2020 that was cancelled because of COVID. Uh, I bought the Guzzi because of the cruise control, uh, the shaft drive and uh, the large capacity 23 litre fuel tank. So I found in the UK I just didn't, wasn't using those virtues. I wasn't using it enough and I didn't quite gel with the bike enough to keep it. So uh, when Bennett Motorhub did me a good or offered me a good deal on a Motor Marini, a brand new one, just as it come out, I thought I'll give it a go. You know, I like trying something different, which I suppose when you're running tours and you need reliability is, is a bit of a gamble because uh, if something's not reliable, then you're in trouble. The Motorini over 5,000 miles has given me no problems uh, whatsoever mechanically. The only thing has been uh, the head of a, a wing mirror has, has broke off. I mean, I, I've got the a helmet on top of a wing mirror now, and I think that's probably what did it. And, and I've simply replaced it in the short term with a Himalayan uh, wing mirror. But otherwise, everything seems to be lasting well on the bike. I like the fact that there's no paint tarnishing, there's no rubbing on the tank, there's no rubbing uh, down here. Uh, where the boot goes the spokes look to be stainless steel which i think is a really nice touch you know given the issue that honda had with the africa twin spokes um because they were nickel plated steel uh, and tended to corrode as do the v-stroms and, and the Tenere's and so many other of the japanese bikes are clearly using slightly lackluster quality or compromised quality spokes the fact that that's what we call a budget bike uses good quality spokes i think it's quite a nice thing also the fact that the tubeless spokes for me, as a running road tours, I think that's, you know, to have uh, tube tyres on a road bike, bike I think is, is a big issue when you get a puncture. You know, the new Trans Alp, yeah, it's a great bike. Uh, same with the V-Strom 800, great bikes. But they're tubed bikes with no centre stand. Now, if you don't option the centre stand or know how to fix a puncture uh, and get the tyre off, off a rim and put a new tube in, you really are stuck then. Obviously, you've got the instant uh, seal kits, you know, the foam and things. But if that doesn't work, you really are a recovery job. Where with a tube tyre, just put a plug in it and away you go. So that was a nice touch. I guess what one of the big question marks over the Marini is the fact it's only got 59 horsepower and it weighs on my scale is about 240 kilos that's with the engine guards and the, the rear rack on their spec sheet it says about 218 but I've kind of started to take manufacturers claim weights with a, a large pinch of salt and also to me it's a very one di dimensional figure you know weight of a bike well where does the weight sit in the bike you know where, where is it balanced how does it feel to move and pull and push around how does it feel to sit on it and that's far more important and for me, this feels slimmer and more manageable than the Guzzi, which on paper were largely the same spec, spec sheet weight. So I think rather than just go, just grab at the, the, the spec sheet weight for a bike, you've got to go and sit on it. You've got to go and feel it. You've got to see how slender the, the seat is and how far down to the floor it is. Again, seat height tells only half a story because it, again, depends on how wide the seat is. Um, and so I, I think this judgment by spec sheet, certainly when it comes to weight, is, is just a waste of time. So for me, this bike is, it's, it's not light, but it's not heavy, it's manageable, um, it's got a relatively reasonable seat height, I can get a good foot down, a good solid foot down, and so for me, it fits me quite nicely, it doesn't feel as big as my GS12, it doesn't feel as heavy as the Guzzi, it just feels like a bike that's, you know, well suited, well sized for touring. Uh, screen is pretty decent on it. Uh, it's not a big broad screen, but it seems to work cutting off, out all the, the, the buffeting so I can ride at a good motorway speed with the visor up even. Uh, it just seems to give me, give me a lot of face protection. Uh, cruising speed on these, you know, I, I saw claim speed, top speed of 106 miles an hour, but when I was running late to get to Wales one morning, very early, one Sunday morning, you know, this would sit at 100 miles an hour all day long. It was as smooth and, and refined at that speed as it was at 70. So, can you tour on a, on a mid-sized bike? Yes, no problem at all. Could you do it two up? Yes, no problem at all. And I think what's good about the Motor Marini is the handling. It's just got a really nice chassis. It's a Versus 650 ER5 derived chassis, as is the engine. But they've sort of fitted it with a Marzocchi front fork, which works really well. It's fully adjustable, which again is really good for this kind of price point. Uh, it, just, it just works on the road. KYB adjustable rear shock. 
19 inch front, 17 inch rear. It just seems to be a really nice package for a bike, to create a bike that, that sits well on the road, corners really neatly, really crisply, and allows you to make the most of that 59 brake horsepower in and, in and through the corners and out of the corners. So you can be winding on the power through the corners where somebody on maybe a faster bike is still waiting, 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 power out. But by the time they've got their power on, you're already halfway down the straight. So the chassis on this is really good. And for me, is it a slow bike? Well, it's not a fast bike. It's not a fast engine, but you can ride it quickly. And that probably matters more than having a stonking engine. Having a nice chassis, for me, more important than the engine. But so, uh, kind of each to their own. You know, everyone's going to have a different ing ingredient for what makes the, them their perfect buy. Would I like a bit more power? Yes. Would I like a bit more refinement from the engine? Yes. It's kind of a raspy, strained. It certainly took a few thousand miles to bed it in. You know, it's not. It's not a charismatic engine. Uh, I rode it back to back with a V-Strom 650 up in the Highlands, and the, the V-Strom just felt smoother, more tractable, a little bit stronger. Uh, and it made this engine feel a little bit rough by comparison. Equally, we both agreed, me and the owner of the V-Strom, that the riding position on this was, was far better, more spacious, more upright, more room in the leg, broader uh, bars, just had a more mature, grown-up riding style, like an adventure bike style riding position. And we both preferred that about it. If we could put the V-Strom engine in this, I think therefore you'd have a great package. What I also like about the V-Strom, and I don't quite know how they've done it, because it's essentially a touring bike made to look adventure -y, but it's got a really nice, I can't really stand too far up because I'm on a camber, it's got a really nice standing up position. Good width bars, good room in the leg, it just all feels really natural, it falls naturally to hand. So you can ride stood up on this, therefore off-road, quite nicely, and I've took it round Sweet Lamb, uh, the Adventure Academy up in Mid Wales, uh, and it actually did, re did really well, to a point. 145 mil of rear travel and I think 165 or 175 on the front. So not a huge amount of suspension travel, which means it's good It's good to a point and then beyond that point, it's out of its depth. Now equally, there's a, there's a lot of plastic. Uh, the tyres are compromised by being more a road bias tyre. The Pirelli STR uh, Rally tyre is really good. I've really enjoyed it as a road tyre, but it's not a great off-road tyre. Uh, and and it, it mirrors the bike. It, it, it will go off-road, but it's not. It's, natural environment and I didn't buy it for that purpose. I think a Himalayan would run rings around it and a CRF 300 rally would run, run two rings around it. So, you know, I don't personally think anybody's buying these kind of bikes to ride them off-road anyway. A small small minority, but, you know, you can't you can't design a bike around them. Um, so all in all, 5,000 miles, uh, I fitted the engine guards, I did have the upper guards, but took those off because I thought they looked a bit cumbersome, and I was convinced, well, I was, I was probably sus suspicious that if you did have an impact, it would actually just press them in and crack the plastics anyway, so better off without. And then the shad pannier frames, which I threw some adventure spec Magadan 3 panniers over for the Scotland trip, which were absolutely fine for six or seven days. But then on the long motorway stint back down, the heat of the exhaust uh, melted through the pannier and through a, a, an expensive laptop. So lessons learned there a little bit. Hard luggage or maybe those uh, hard backed soft panniers that uh, Lone Rider, Boomer and actually shad, shad themselves do. Uh, so... <coughs> A lesson to learn there but as again as a touring bike i think it works well it's got a comfy comfy seat good screen good right good all day riding position it's got enough power and performance to make a good pace uh, there's not a lot of power in um in reserve but you know um you've got to weigh up what you need in life that's about it five thousand miles am i happy with it yes do i regret buying it no uh will i keep it for a bit longer probably yes uh, should you buy one well it's a difficult market out there. There's lots of good bikes to buy. You know, Tenere, uh, Versus, Transalp, V-Strom. There's, there's NC750 even. Uh, Trident 660. You know, there's so many good mid-size adventure touring bikes. And I think Motor Marini's job now, really, the, the bike is there. The bike is fine. It could be improved. You know, the engine could be refined a bit more. It could give a bit more power. It could give a little less engine heat, which is a bit of an issue, I think. Um... You know, the ways they could fine-tune the bike, but the product is pretty good. The way that the Chinese are able to copy 
now, now quite successfully the Japanese, uh, it, it means that the product, there's no problem with the product. It's everything else that comes with a bike, i.e. the dealerships, the, the marketing, the attendance at bike shows. You know, Motor Marini weren't at Motorcycle Live, and I think that's a bigger mission. You're trying to get people to get behind the brand to buy the bikes, and to not have, them, to not have your bike at a show as big as the NEC. You know, you only get one shot at launching a bike before it fades away and there's a new bike through. So, yeah, I, should you buy one? Well, are you risk averse? Are you, do you like a bike that you know is going to have a, a certain resale value, the part supply um, and everything else that goes with buying an established brand? Well, if you're that kind of person, then no, don't buy one of these. Buy something, buy a Versus 650. But if you want something different, you know, if you want something that looks quite funky, I really like the, the look of it, that rides well that gets a lot of, quite a lot of attention, people are curious, then the Marini is a good bike. I'd probably buy the cast aluminium wheel bike for 7,000 because again, it's not an off-road bike, I don't need spoke wheels. And that's it, I think that's my review done. I don't think I've got anything else to say in 5,000 miles. Got some traffic. How does she look? Have I hit record? Yes, I have hit record. Handsome bike, let me show you around. So there's Woolacombe behind, and if we pan around, we've got the sea. We should see Lundy Island out there somewhere, just in the clouds, Lundy Island out there. Sorry, I've got terrible panning action, haven't I? Surfers down there, and it goes out. The sun is coming down. So yeah, I'm just gonna point you a few details on the bike before I pack up and head home. As I say, the quality, I'm actually, wait a sec, wait one second, give me one second. Let's get that off. Yeah, the quality of everything seems pretty good. I don't see any signs of corrosion or paint wear. The guzzy, you know, the engine paint was de after a few thousand miles uh, at the front of the engine because it got a lot of stone chips. Uh, this doesn't seem to be any tarnishing. No paint rub on the, on the where the knees go. Nothing there on the tank where the tank bag's been. A little bit on the back where the, the straps have been, but nothing too bad. You can see the issue with the exhaust. It's mid mid exit, mid height, mid length. So for to sit a soft luggage over that and not feel the heat from the exhaust is difficult. So it's something to watch because it, it can catch you out. It's embarrassing when it happens and it's easy to blame the, the product as I, I guess I did. I thought, you know, uh, maybe the panniers could be improved, but it's difficult, you know, if it's not a good combination of bike and panniers, it is difficult. Exposed header pipes there, you can get an aluminium sump guard. That's probably something to look for, you know, look to in the future. The brakes and Brembo's, uh, they're, they're okay. You know, I've had somebody ride it who owns a KTM 890 Adventure R and his Brembo brakes are four part and these are twin part and the, the brakes on that, K Advent, that KTM are fantastic and these are okay. Uh, they do the job, I think it's what you get used to. Again, those Pirellis are a good type. Pirelli, also, it turns out, are owned by China as well. So Very difficult these days to differentiate between what's made in China uh, and what's not. I think China infests the um, supply chain of motorcycling, largely by the design of the uh, European and Japanese manufacturers. It, it, uh, they are with us whether we like it or not, and it comes down to your choice as to whether you buy a bike that is entirely built in Chinese, or buy a bike that has components from China. Um, I don't know if I've already mentioned, but CF Moto, the Chinese company, build this engine, but they also build the KTM 890 engine and the 790 engine. Uh, so it's not like they're stealing technology anymore, it's, uh, it's the European brands going to the Chinese to get them to build the engines. And then obviously as part of that agreement, the Chinese can use the engine themselves. Yeah, it's murky, it's difficult. Politics, politics and everything else. So that's it, we're going to head home. Uh, I hope that was kind of useful. If you've got any questions on the Marini, just you know, just ask in the comments. If you own one, let me know what, how you're getting on with it. Um, if you thought about one and bought something else, let me know what you bought and why. Why you didn't go for the Marini in the end. So that's it. Goodbye, sunset. See you tomorrow.